Hello, my name is Corentin. I'm a data engineer at Showroom Privé. And I'm going to talk about data ownership and what we achieved um, to facilitate data governance. Before that, a short introduction of Showroom Privé. So we are a French company founded uh, 15 years ago. Um, we are an e-commerce platform dedicated to fashion, beauty, and home. We collect unsold products from brands and we rework the marketing to make products look more attractive and we organize sales events. We are based in Paris, but we are also present in Italy, Spain, and other European countries. Our data team is composed of 20 people, and we have had Data Hub in production since last November. Okay, let's get to the main topic of this talk. Let's go back one year ago. I arrived at Showroom Privé as an intern, and we had 2,000 data sets on Redshift, undocumented, 100 dashboards, and about 50 DAGs on Airflow. As a data engineer, one of my missions um, is to alert the right people when a pipeline goes down. But without documentation, it was a struggle to get the emails of the managers. So as soon as a task failed, I used to spam everyone. Since then, we have come a long way thanks to Data Hub. And setting ownership rules has been really useful to us for several reasons. It allows us to empower people. We expect owners to deliver data on time while guaranteeing the desired level of quality. Also, they are asked to document the entity. Setting ownership rules has allowed us to be more responsive in the event of an incident. Indeed, with the impact analysis feature, we can quickly recover the emails of all the person, all the people affected in the event of a breakdown. In the future, we would like to automate this process with an email alert and prevent certain tasks from starting if um, there has been a problem upstream. And last but not least, now we know who to reach if we need information. To begin with, we try to extract owners from the source as much as possible. This has been possible on Airflow and Click, where we just made some changes to make the format match with the URN patterns. For our machine learning datasets, we usually add a prefix with a project code. For example, all tables related to the churn project start with churn dash. This has allowed us to add owners by dataset URN pattern. Here is the transformer we added in our recipe file. So John Doe and I will be added as owners um, on all tables 
of the project A. And finally, we use the interface uh, to complete what remains. For owner's choice, we always put the person who provides the data. We add their team as support to always have someone when uh, they are out of office. And sometimes we add a third entity, a stakeholder or a main user. As I said before, the owners are responsible for the documentation of their entities. That's why we have a policy rule which allows only owners to edit documentation. After deploying Data Hub and ingesting our main data sources, we started a documentation work. In a few months, we have had to make a great effort of documentation. We have had to solicit all the team and direct our efforts to start with the most important data sets. We created a DAG that extracts our entities and their owners. Thanks to Lineage, we added some rules to favor influential entities. A matching algorithm associates an entity to document with each data hub user. And finally, we send an email to ask users to complete the documentation. Another tricky subject is rights management. We are very concerned about data sets permissions because we want to ensure users have access to the information they need to complete their jobs. And we also want to keep our data safe. Thanks to no code feature, we added a permissions tab in order to view the list of users with access to the data set. It allows managers to verify compliance with the principle of list privilege and users can see what rights they have. That's all I wanted to share. I wanted to thank my team, um, so Data Hub core team and the Slack community. You have my contact details if you have any questions.